Um, each tradition says it in its own way, but it's remarkably saying the same thing as the Sufis say. You know, uh, there, there, are, there are many lamps, but there's only one light. Um, that would actually be my understanding of it. That uh, through the traditions, you're seeking the light, and it's the same light. The starting point really is the title of the book, Harmony. Uh, the word is an ancient Greek word, harmonia, which means to join things up. And the Prince of Wales is particularly keen to use that title for the book because it perfectly explains the way nature is. It's a very interconnected, profoundly complex uh, system, and it's harmonic. Uh, that is to say that uh, it, it strives for an equilibrium, a balance. And if things get out of balance, if the equilibrium is, is broken, you get dis-ease. And this is what we're seeing in the world now. Nature is being uh, unbalanced and therefore we're getting disease all over the world. So um, the, the aim was to try and explain how nature operates. It was also uh, to try and explain how all the way through the history of humanity, we have understood this up until probably about 300 years ago when a, a degree of rationalism took over and really uh, uh, neglected an entire side to us, the intuitive, uh, heartfelt side to us. And, and, and therefore we're out of balance. We essentially, I would contend, uh, suffer a crisis in our perception, a crisis in our perception of what we are and where we are. And the Prince wanted to attempt to, to explain how that uh, understanding has been broken by the things that have happened, uh, certainly in the past 300 years and, and more recently in the past 100 years or so, when this uh, mechanistic attitude, this uh, what is generally called modernism, uh, tended to dominate uh, thinking. And it's the, it's the philosophy of the straight line uh, it's the philosophy of the machine. Um, it's the pursuit of progress using mechanized processes, forgetting that we are not just uh, mechanical objects, that we are ultimately uh, spiritual creatures. It's a spiritual crisis. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, that we have become disconnected from the, 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 the what the Buddhists would call the ground of our being. Um, you know, if you think about consciousness and ask yourself what it is, uh, one way of defining it, I would suggest, is that we are aware of being. But what is awareness and, and what is the beingness of which we are aware? And the modern world doesn't ask that question, it kind of ignores it. Uh, and by ignoring it and by disconnecting ourselves from that, uh, that divine element within, um, we suffer uh, a disconnection from ourselves. And I think from that chasm, we get the obvious disconnection that we see around us now with, with the natural world, which itself is part of this uh, expression of the divine. For me, uh, there was a great turning point in my life, and, and it happened uh, in a field, in a beautiful landscape, uh, where I had been told um, years ago that if you really want to scuba dive and see the wildlife in the ocean, you need to hang in the water for at least 30 minutes. If you flap about, the real creatures don't come out. And I remember this piece of advice as I was sitting in this landscape. And so I sat there in total silence for about 30 minutes. And slowly but surely, all sorts of creatures started to come out, you know, rabbits and birds that, that wouldn't have come out because they were nervous of me. Um, and I started to just let thoughts run around in my mind. And one of the thoughts that came into my mind was, why is it when I sit in this particular landscape, it's very special to me, um, don't I have all the questions that I have elsewhere? And something inside me told me not to, not to try and answer that question, but to let the answer come. And believe it or not, it did come. It took another 25 minutes of just sitting in silence. And I can remember it vividly, 
just the idea suddenly fell into my mind because you're known and um, the Spanish have a marvelous word carencia which uh, as far as I understand it describes that sense of being known by a landscape not that you know the landscape but it, it knows you and that sense of knowing or being known and belonging to it uh, was an incredibly important um, moment for me because it, it, I suddenly realized, of course, therefore, everything is known. It's just a matter of finding it out. So when you ask me, what do I know? Um, what I know is everything's known. And uh, that gives me a tremendous peace and a tremendous uh, hope. Uh, and that goes for the solutions that we might find for the many problems that, that the world faces. But I think it goes deeper than that, because therefore I, 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 I am part of it. I am part of the, the knowing universe. But in being here and being conscious of the universe, it makes the universe conscious. And that itself is a remarkably miraculous uh, fact of life. And uh, I can't explain why it is. It's unfathomable. But it's there. and. Through us, the universe knows itself. And I would contend that that's the heart of every sacred tradition. It's about connecting with that knowingness that lies at the heart of life and um, being humble about it and, um, and finding an anchor in it. And the problem, if I may say, I think in, in the westernized world, and not just the West, the world is becoming more westernized in its approach, is that we have lost that, um, that, that, that umbilical cord, or I wouldn't say we've lost it, but you can see around the world that it has been severed quite severely. And uh, I think we need to reconnect with that. Therefore, are honored this 20th of March to bestow upon you this day our Center of Interfaith Relations Lifetime Achievement.